so can everyone see my desktop there, this first slide, is that, we're good? Okay. Um, so this talk is about implementing a virtuoso service for indexing Drupal RDF. Uh, and I've subtitled this a collaboration between a gracious module maintainer, uh, who is Stefan, and uh, Adobe developer, which is myself here. Uh, and so this is really my uh, Lord of the Rings journey through uh, module patching and collaboration and, and using Drupal.org issues and all that stuff. Um, so, I'd like to just sort of give you an overview of what we're going to talk about today. So this is my table of contents slide, and I love to title it, When Can You Nap? So uh, I've listed out here the sections that I'm going to go through and the slide numbers, which you can see in the upper left-hand corner, so feel free to doze off and pipe back in and, and you'll have a sense of where we're at. But uh, I just want to give you a brief introduction to... Uh, BicoDemo, that's the project that I work on. Uh, sort of the, the challenges that we face as we migrate over to Drupal 7. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about this Virtuoso service and then hopefully spend most of the time just giving you a demo of what that's like um, and then talking about some of the other RDF solutions that we needed to uh, enact to get this working for our project and then just some of the lessons learned and then we can open it up to questions, and then if you want to dig into to code, uh, we can certainly do that. So, oops, and I've already screwed up here. Here we go. There we go. Okay, so BicoDemo. Uh, BicoDemo is an NSF-funded data management office, uh, primarily involved with supporting the data lifecycle for marine biogeochemistry and ecological data. So what we do is we partner with the PIs to uh, help them get funding, uh, acquire the data, publish the data, uh, analyze it, uh, help that data become more discoverable. Uh, we try to enable use and reuse of that data. Um, so there's a whole bunch of different things that we are involved with. Um, but the one that I really want to focus on today is just this idea of data discovery and how that how RDF plays in, in, that, in that process. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, so what we try to do when we receive data from a PI or a researcher is extract out that data. So that's, we're talking about the parameters, the instruments that were used, um, the cruises that that data might have been on, who collected it, who, who funded that data, or the projects. So all that sort of information can come in off that and stored in MySQL. And then that is uh, managed by a Cold Fusion UI uh, by our data managers. And so it's that process, that Cold Fusion process, that we're going to migrate over to uh, Drupal 7. Okay, so BicoDemo and Link Data, or Semantics, I should say, we started a relationship uh, around the area of 2010, and uh, this was an initiative between ourselves and the Tetheless World Constellation led by Peter Fox's group. And so out of that collaboration birthed uh, the BicoDemo ontology, uh, and then soon after that, some RDF representations of all that metadata that we extract. And I want to say that uh, the relationship got uh, really serious around 2011 when we started to link to other repositories. And those started with these standard community vocabularies like CDataNet uh, served out of the British Oceanographic Data Center. Um, but also we're starting to link to some more upstream data repositories like the uh, R2R Cruise Catalog. So uh, we're, we're in this relationship here and uh, we've got all these assets and We've got these, these offspring, I want to call them, of this a relationship. And so just to, to show you an idea of what some of those things are is, one, we have a geospatial faceted search interface that uh, PIs, researchers can come to and really just sort of ask questions of our metadata model uh, from their perspective. Um, and, and so what that does is it, it's backed by Sparkle queries via an open search interface. And uh, it just gives them a geospatial mapping uh, way to, 
to get at data that interests them. Uh, so another use for linked data for us is content validation. And what we're doing there is we're really trying to, as a data management office, make sure that our data is accurate and correct. Um, and so we're playing with the idea of derived graphs, which is mining information from a multiple sources and, and compiling it together uh, into a graph at a triple store. Uh, and so another a visual representation of content validation that we're toying with is um, talking to Sparkle endpoints uh, at these upstream data repositories for uh, geometrical features that we can then map. And so, uh, for instance, we'll take our cruise track information that we have and query our to our Sparkle endpoint and ask them for their cruise track geometry and then map these on an interface just to see if we uh, are aligned in what we think the cruise was. Okay, so how this all happens right now, this is pre-Drupal. We have a nightly script that is indexing the MySQL database that ColdFusion sits on top of and it's generating these RDF dump files. Those RDF dump files are one per concept. So if we're talking about instruments, parameters, data sets, deployments, people, those are our concepts. So what we come out of these nightly scripts are about 10 to 12 huge RDF files. And those RDF files um, are modeled with this ocean data ontology. This is the ontology that the TWC group helped us build. Uh, and there's specific URI patterns for all of those RDF resources. Uh, and so when that nightly script finishes, Virtuoso then ingests those dumps, which I like to call VD just because it, it gives me some minor headaches, I'll say. The, the process works very well, uh, and it's really worked out for us, but there are a couple of things that if I could, I'd love to tweak uh, if it's possible in Drupal. And so the first one of those is that when Virtuoso ingests these dumps, the first thing it does is deletes the entire graph and then recreates it. And, and certainly that's the safest way to, to insert that data and make sure that the data is correct. Um, but for a period of time there, it looks like our endpoint doesn't have any data. So that's a minor headache that I'd, I'd love to deal with. And then these nightly scripts, since they only run once a day, our, our content is stale for a 24-hour period. Okay, so what are the challenges in migrating to Drupal? Um, the first is I just need Drupal to generate RDF. If, if we can do that, then uh, we're really in the game here. And uh, the famous Drupal phrase, there's a module for that, certainly applies here uh, with SCORE's RDFX module. The second thing I need Drupal to do is to populate Virtuoso. And uh, the last time we had uh, our ESIP Drupal call, uh, SCORE demoed his RDF indexer module, which does just that over the search API that um, populates an internal R2 store in the MySQL database or whatever database is backing your, your Drupal. So uh, again, that's, that's really close to what I need to, to do. It's just that I need to go one step further and have it populate an external triple store. So taking inventory, between these two modules, I'm like 90% of the way there. And uh, for that, somebody just needs to give Stefan and Lynn Clark and company a, a huge hug because they just saved me a serious amount of time. And so the decision point for me was really, you know, should I create these dump files from Drupal, right, and, and live with the virtuoso scripts and the VD, whatever you want to call it, or should I uh, be brave enough to suggest that maybe we patch RDF indexer or, or create a module that is uh, related. So I decided to uh, approach the Oracle, as I'll call it. So this is the first time I've ever created a Drupal.org issue. So for some reason, it was very intimidating to me. Uh, it seems like everyone that posts issues there knows what they're talking about and is very eloquent. But maybe that's a misperception on my part. So I submitted this issue saying to, uh, to SCORE about the RDF ind indexer module that I'd love to see a virtuoso open source search in service implemented. Um, and three minutes later, I got back <laughs> a response saying, this is great, go for it. So uh, OK, that was, that was great. I didn't get struck by lightning. And uh, it was certainly a very encouraging welcome into uh, working on modules. 
So then I was sort of tasked with, all right, well, geez, I guess I got to figure out how Virtuoso does this. Uh, and, and there's a couple ways that it does it, but the one that was most compelling to me was um, this path that Virtuoso sets up called Sparkle-Off. Uh, and what it is, it's a path that supports authenticated Sparkle update statements. Um, and so the, the authentication is, is a digest authentication. Um, and so I knew that that would be another hurdle I needed to tackle on the Drupal side of this patch. Um, but I, I knew I needed to create a user in Virtuoso to make this happen. So uh, you go to the con Virtuoso conductor UI and you're able to create a user account that has special privileges to this Sparkle auth path. So uh, that got me uh, th over that hurdle. So next I, I try to resolve the Sparkle auth path and get my little login box and type in the username and password of the account that I just created on Virtuoso. And uh, amazingly, it, it lets me into this Sparkle endpoint browser window where I can start to type Sparkle statements. Uh, so we're, we're gaining. So now I just needed to understand you know, what an insert and delete statement looked like at Virtuoso. So I just wanted to throw one up here real quick just to make sure we're all on the same page. Um, that it reads like this, insert data into graph, and I give it a graph URI, and then I begin to list out my triples. Uh, so as an example, if I wanted to insert an article, um, it would look like this example below here. <coughs> so then delete statements look like this. So with that graph URI, you can delete all the triples where the triple subject is a certain URI, and amazingly, this, this works as well. And so I was off and running, and I just needed to figure out, well, how does this work machine to machine? Like, how can I do this over HTTP? So uh, with a little struggling, realized that I could post to that Sparkle auth URI uh, and just made sure that I need to set the co correct content type header and handle the digest auth and make sure I set my authorization header. And then the data is really just the query equals your Sparkle update statement. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so at this point, I've got a proof of concept working at the browser. I've got a proof of concept working at on the HTTP level. Uh, now it was time just to dig into um, the RDF indexer code and just figure out how to create this virtuoso service. Um, and Stefan's code is so elegant, it was super easy to realize that, okay, I just need to create a new instance of this search API abstract service and really just implement three certain functions. One function was just a co configuration form, which is just a Drupal form that lets you store data that's relevant to the uh, triple store server that I'm going to, or the search API server, if you want to call it. Um, and then the other two methods, the index items is just how I'm going to insert data into the search API server, or in this case, Virtuoso. And then the last method, the delete items. Am I going too fast for everyone? Or are you guys, are you tracking or am I killing you? <coughs> Okay. I've muted everyone from here, uh, so uh, just ping me on uh, chat if you want to be unmuted to ask the question, because there was too much echoing. Okay, great. So this configuration form, I just wanted to, before we got into a demo, I just wanted to show you just real quickly what it looks like. So um, this is where I'm going to specify that Sparkle auth path. Okay, and then a specific graph URI that this Drupal search API service is going to write data to. Um, and then I guess the most, the other relevant fields here are the username and credential down below, which helps me with the digest authentication. So uh, without further ado, let's get into a demo here. Um, okay, okay. <coughs> okay, 
So, um, I'm on a, a Drupal website right now that has the RDF indexer module installed. Um, and at the end of this call, if you want to see what that looks like with the patch, um, we can certainly go through that process. Um, so let me get to the, the top of the search API configuration section here. <coughs> so what I've done is created a search API server, um, named it Virtuoso, and then here's that configuration form where I get to specify um, all the parameters that are relevant to uh, this version of the Virtuoso endpoint. Okay, and then here's just the confirmation of what I've submitted. And then, let's see, following SCORE's great documentation about how to create your actual indexes. Um, I've already set one up here, so let's just take a quick peek at it. Um, I, well, let, let me delete this one and we can start over here. create a new index, and let's just say I want to index nodes, so I'll just give it the name nodes. Uh, I'll specify that the entity I want to search over is nodes, set my server to virtuoso, and then I'm going to set, I won't set that just yet, but I'll create this index here. Okay, and then there's all these other settings here which we can ignore for right now just want to go to status and it's telling me, okay, I've got 250,000 nodes that, that need to be indexed. Um, and so let's create another index. <laughs> so we don't want to sit and wait for that. So let's just do taxonomy terms here. Virtuoso, create, status, okay. So I think I've got Drupal all set up. Let me just flip over to, uh, this is Virtuoso. Let me just clear out the graph here. So I've got this graph. Let me clear it. There's no data in there now. So let me index these taxonomy terms. Okay. And we've got data in the Sparkle endpoint. Um, so, we're, we're making progress. This is great. Um, so, one of the cool things about the search API is that you can specify these things to index automatically, which uh, is such a super cool feature because when nodes are updated or deleted, this will trigger the search API to go through all of its indexes and, and republish out that content. So. Um, and this really solves one of those headaches that I mentioned earlier about our content being stale for a 24-hour period, is that now when content edited on my Drupal site, it's automatically pushed to Virtuoso and my Sparkle endpoint is up to date uh, in real time. So that's a huge win. Um, and that, So that is under settings. I can say index items immediately. And then uh, let's just pick one of these taxonomy terms. So this authority one here, let's change the alt label, so ICs. So we go to taxonomy, edit, let's change it to ICs test, save, and with any luck on a refresh here, we've got ICs test. So uh, things are looking up. <coughs> All right, let me go back to the index and just work on clearing the index, right? So this should wipe out all the data uh, that's relevant to this specific index, so just taxonomy terms. So in doing that, clear index, I shouldn't have any data in here anymore. And so that's really the search API working off that index items function and the delete items function. So uh, we're making progress. Um, so let's go back to the slides here. And switch my displays. Dick Van Dyke is super happy. That's good. 
Okay, so <clears throat> we've got this Virtuoso service working. Um, for Bico Demo, there was a couple other RDF challenges that we had to face. Um, so I just want to briefly go over those, and then uh, we, can, we can look at those later if you have questions. Uh, but the first hurdle that I had was that the structure of our content types in the fields didn't exactly align with the ontology that was developed uh, out of TWC. And so I had to figure out a way to, once the RDFX module created that ARC2 resource, right, that is the, the RDF representation of this, this content that I have here, um, I need a way to, to be able to add additional uh, fields or triples to that uh, and, and manipulate that. So uh, hopefully score is okay with this, but uh, there's a patch out there that adds a Drupal alter call into uh, RDFX's function that, that generates the RDF. So I'm, I'm using that to, to add those fields, and I can show you an example in a, in a second. So that was one hurdle and, and solved by that patch. Uh, the second hurdle was this idea of RDF versioning, right? So as our ontology changes, um, we've been really asking the question, do we need to keep older versions of our RDF? Uh, and this is mostly application driven. So you know, if there's software either in-house here or externally that's depending on um, you know, a certain version of, of RDF expecting certain properties in those triples or predicates. Um, you know, we need to be aware of that. And so one of these ideas of RDF versioning uh, has popped up, and uh, I can show you how we're planning to tackle that, but no patches needed there. Uh, and then this other idea, which um, doesn't really have an elegant solution right now, um, is, so say if we want our RDF resources to have very specific URIs, and that those URIs don't match your Drupal domain. Uh, I've been toying with this idea of a, a Drupal alter support uh, inside the function that, that RDFX uses to generate the URI for RDF. Um, and I can show you what that looks like um, if I click it on this link here. So why don't we dive in? <clears throat> okay, so this is. RDF generated by Drupal in the RDFX module uh, with some manipulation. So you'll notice that the URI says staging.bicodemo.org slash node 2272.rdf. But the, the RDF resource URI is completely different. And it's set to LOD, which is, stands for linked open data, at bicodemo.org resource project 2272. Uh, and so that was achieved by this Drupal alter inside the RDFX resource URI function, um, which doesn't have a patch or isn't implement implemented yet, and I haven't even mentioned it till score, uh, but I guess he knows now that uh, <laughs> this is on our plate. Um, okay, and so let's just look at other features here that aren't sort of encapsulated in the RDFX's representation of RDF, and so how do we add these extra fields into the RDF that um, isn't quite possible yet? And this is how I use that Drupal alter patch um, that builds the, the RDF model from the RDFX module. So here you can see I, I'm including a, a completely new RDF resource in this representation, um, and it's just a different view of this 2272, and this is our implementation of the DCAT ontology. Um, and so I can show you examples of, of how we do that in the code later on if, if anyone's interested. So back to the, the slides here. Lessons learned for me. So you know, I submitted this patch to, to uh, the RDF indexer module and um, just awaiting feedback on that. Um, but I wanted to, to quickly just sort of talk about my own experience, right? So uh, for me, this has really just hit home the idea that uh, the Drupal community is awesome, one, and that the, the module maintainers really need feedback for there to be progress to be made. Um, and so I've got this little picture up here that says Occupy Mordor, right? That there isn't one ring to rule them all. And so for me, that one ring is just like one use case, right, to rule them all. And so I guess the way that I've been in the past is 
you know, about contributed modules is just, you know, my cranky, selfish expectation that contrib modules are like the final word. They're like, this is the de facto, this is how we tackle this problem. Um, and this was just a complete lesson for me that that's completely not true and that there's a place for, for issues on these specific projects and, and to, to collaborate with the module maintainers to make those modules better and to provide functionality. Um, and, and certainly there might be cases where, you know, my specific use case doesn't match up with the, the vision of that module and that's okay. Um, but I think for progress to be made, um, we definitely need to give the module maintainers our feedback. And so my experience with Stefan has just been absolutely wonderful. Um, you know, I created these issues on Drupal.org and uh, he's been so encouraging and pointing me in the right direction to talk to people. Uh, who have knowledge of Virtuoso. Uh, he's always provided me some great feedback and uh, so far he's been patient with my mistakes. Uh, as you can see my latest post here, uh, I've been submitting patches and uh, they haven't been quite up to snuff, so uh, he hasn't growled at me too much uh, and so I appreciate that. So um, that's mostly it. If, if you have questions or want to dig into the code, uh, I'd be more than happy to, um, so fire away. Hi, Adam. Uh, maybe I can start. Um, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hi, this is the score. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm very happy to see the results of our collaboration. Uh, it, it's great. I, I wrote this earlier in Excel module a few months ago, and I wasn't too sure where I would go, but seeing where, where you are with this module today is uh, very pleasing. Um, and I must say the, the size of your project also is, is the largest have seen running this, uh, this RDF, RDF index or module. So I'm very happy to see the results here. Great. Great. Um, so, and if you, if, if I was on mute, you would hear me laughing during the entire presentation you've done. Uh, um, so uh, I have some feedback um, the, about the Drupal Alpha patch. So, okay. I mean, I'm perfectly fine with using this approach since I actually wrote the patch. So, <laughs> I, I, I'm, uh, I was mostly waiting for feedback before committing it. So, you know, here is another feedback confirming that, uh, you know, maybe I should commit it. So, great. Thanks for using it. Great. Um, yeah. Sure. <laughs> I, I really like your idea of um, uh, your rights being different than the ones that people will find. And it's it's true it's true like the the use case you have with uh, staging the uh, picodemo.org uh, and you want a different uh, URI to be there that's that's actually a problem I've encountered and I haven't come up with a solution so please uh, please do contribute this uh, to to the issue queue like you've done already so you know how it works now um, and I I really like it so. And finally, so just so there's not time for the last question, uh, I just want to, you know, you were asking about feedback to module maintainers, so I, I want to confirm that your vision, you know, what you've implemented with Virtuoso, uh, is perfectly in line with the vision of the module of being uh, absolutely modular, and, um, being able to plug it to any backend. So I, I started with R2, but now you 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 brought a driver for Virtuoso, and you know hopefully others will contribute other drivers for other backends. But that's the idea. Um, so it's great, and I'm very uh, very honored to have a big project like yours to uh, to contribute to the community. Uh, so thank you. Great, thank you. Are there any other questions, or is anyone interested in what the code looks like? Um, maybe I'm pushing that too much because I'm literally a code monkey, so I, I sit here chained to my desk and rarely do presentations like this, so uh, um, I'm really out of my element here. Um, but well, uh, Adam, this is Bruce. So. Uh, so the output of this is going. Who, who's the user community, and and uh, um, 
you know, what what do they see from this? So, right, right. So the user community, for, you mean for the for our virtuoso triple store? For the, um, well, for your website, that 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 this is you know the back end of. Gotcha, gotcha. So the Bico Demo website is primarily geared towards uh, biological and chemical oceanography researchers. Um, and so from this website, they can find data that NSF has funded or p potentially other award uh, funding sources have funded. Um, and so we model the metadata that we collect from PIs um, to enable data discovery in a better way. And so I could demo our S2S interface here, which is sparkle driven. If I could. Let's see here. Okay. So this interface is running on some software that Eric Rizal wrote called S2S. And S2S is just a framework for um, I, for lack of better terms, because my brain is fried, uh, semantic mashups, right? So all these modules on the left-hand side are um, querying our Sparkle endpoint through an open search uh, interface. And so as you manipulate the left-hand side, the other facets change, and the map changes to show you where relevant data is, right? So let's say I was interested in well, here's really the power of linked data is in these instrument categories, right? So earlier I talked about how we were linking our metadata content to other repositories, and one of those repositories is the C DataNet vocabulary served by the British Oceanographic Data Center. And so what they publish is a list of SCOS vocabularies about instruments, parameters, a whole bunch of other things. And so by aligning our terms with their terms, we get this huge value so that someone who comes to this website and says, you know, I don't know what BicoDemo has for, for instrumentation, but I know that I want transmissometer data. They can come to instrument categories, type transmissometer, and see that there's 536 data sets related to instrumentation that collected transmissometer data. So by picking that, um, it's whittled down these other categories. Well, let me just pick a better one here. So let, let's just say people. You know, it's whittled down these categories to who's collected this data. Well, maybe I need to do that again. Yeah, okay. And so now I can really drill down into, okay, I don't really know who these people are, but I know who Elaine is, so let me just see what she's done with transmissometers. And so I can really get at this data and and, and find exactly what I'm looking for. So. I'm not too well versed in how the actual mapping and get data work. Uh, this is a different programmer, but um, I know there's some way to get at this from the interface here. Um, so, but that's just a general gist of how we're using linked data um, to really drive some software applications. If you check your chat, someone had a question in the chat. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. How do I do that here? Um, help me out. Is there? A, how do I look at that? All right. Let me just. I'll just say it. I'll just read it to you. Okay. It seems that you're. It seems that you're injecting URIs to the indexer different from the server's namespace. What verification is that? that those URIs are actually servable or that they are unique? Right, right. That's a great question. So, yeah, if we do go down this road of, um, you know, altering the URIs, right, then it's really up to the, you as a developer to ensure that whatever URI design pattern you've selected ensures that they're unique, right? Um, so for us, uh, certainly we want to put up some content negotiation or, or some Apache redirects um, in place that will at least take those URIs and direct them to the appropriate place, whether they're asking for RDF representations or HTML or, or whatever. Um, so for us, we had this 
design pattern for URIs in place before uh, this migration at Drupal was, was completed. So we really wanted to preserve those. And it's not so much an issue um, at the browser level, right, when you, when you resolve this RDF. You know, that's, that's easy using Apache rewrites. But I think the more compelling idea for us was we want these URI patterns to be in the, the triple store so that when people query our content, they're getting subject URIs that um, look the way that we want them to. So I don't know if that answers the question entirely, but that's our thought process. Um, so please pipe in if uh, we're you know, having adventures and missing the point. Are there, are there other questions for, for Adam? You could say uh, a quick word about how fast indexing is happening. Like, is your virtual backhand uh, being a bottleneck, or is it uh, Drupal rather the bottleneck? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so when I first wrote the well, the first patch that I submitted, which I think was comment number eight, um, it was fairly simple. Instead of using post, I was using uh, get as the HTTP method, um, which was working fine in these test cases. So uh, my first benchmarks were about against like 600,000 nodes that all had fairly simple properties. I wasn't manipulating the RDF to add extra data to them. Uh, and that was running at about a little less than 5,000 nodes a minute. Um, so that was going fairly fast. But what I was finding is that using the get HTTP method, if you have a ton of data, uh, some of that data gets truncated and it doesn't insert into the triple store. Uh, so I had to switch over to post, um, which was working fine until I ran into a limit on the number of lines that Virtuos will allow you to insert in one insert statement. So <laughs> that made me have to, at the indexing uh, function, uh, create multiple insert Sparkle update statements. So if on a huge RDF representation, I might have to call the insert two or three times. Um, so there's a little bit of overhead there. Uh, and I think there's a little bit of overhead in the authorization. Uh, I'm not completely sure if um, my digest authentication is, is is, yeah, performant. Um, th there might be a case where it's asking the endpoint to insert. It's saying no, authenticate. It authenticates. It gets the header, and then everything works fine. But I, I don't think that that authorization header is being saved for subsequent requests. So obviously there's some overhead there that I could probably cut down on if that is indeed the case. That sounds like the lunch bell. Um, any last questions for Adam? Okay, Adam, thank you so much. Great. Thank you, guys. It's been cool. Um, next, uh, uh, next month's uh, call is the day before Thanksgiving. Um, so I'm not sure uh, how uh, how well that will be uh, uh, received, um, but uh, uh, tentatively uh, we may have someone from uh, Phase Two talking about uh, uh, their development of the latest uh, version of Open Atrium. We'll see. Um, I don't know if anyone's off to uh, Ad Camp this weekend, um, but uh, if you are, have a good time. And uh, we'll talk next month. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys. We'll see you later. Thank you. Thanks, Evan. Thanks, Stefan. <laughs>